sculpture is um, it's one of those arts that's um, very often anonymous, particularly architectural sculpture. They go up on the side of buildings and no one really knows who did it. And that's okay. I really took to the idea of, of taking sharp tools and passing them through wood. There's something about the combination of the, the sound and the senses and, and uh, the smell of the material. And you, you get the same thing with all materials. It's just a different experience with each one. I never studied sculpture formally. I, I went to, uh, I studied art all through school. And when I was a kid, I took private art lessons for four or five years from the time I was about eight to 12. And uh, that really helped me out a lot. I think that it was very strongly influenced by a woman who was a friend of my mother who was, a, who was an artist and she was, she was a sculptor and, and worked in a lot of really different materials, combinations of materials. And uh, she was very influential in my early years. I also studied drawing, uh, drafting that is, architectural drafting and mechanical drafting. My dad wanted me to be a draftsman. I had other ideas. The inspiration can come from, um, from a walk, you know, looking down, looking around, seeing animals or, or birds or um, just something as simple as a flower thing, looking at the flower and wondering how that could be transformed into a block of stone or a piece of wood. Well, I never really thought about what it would be like to be the Dominion Sculptor until I saw the competition. I was asking for someone who had a background in conservation, art conservation, and experience sculpting all these different materials, wood, stone, bronze, and uh, the whole thing just looked like it was written specifically for me. And then I, that's when I started to think, well, maybe this can actually happen. And well, I've known about the position for years and years, but I remember thinking to myself, oh, who would take over that job? <laughs> <laughs> because I've known about it for so long, it really is like, literally the job of my dreams. Um, something I've thought about for so long, and it's, it's, it's finally come true, you know, it's something I feel like I've been building up to all my life. The, the project that I did in the memorial chamber to, to um, replace the, uh, the temporary altars with new permanent altars, that is the, the altars for the Books of Remembrance, is probably the most, um, to date, the most important to me because uh, you know, my family background, my, my parents were veterans, I have, I have relatives who are listed in the Books of Remembrance as casualties in the First World War. Um, so to me that's, it's a, it's a very, it was a very, very important project you know, from, from the point of view of remembering um, Canada's war dead and remembering the sacrifices these people have made. Um, I, I, in my, in my mind, if I had done nothing else with my career and, and just that, I would be perfectly happy. It's, it's a bit hard to comprehend sometimes, leaving this, this legacy for the Canadian people in such a, a fantastic building is, is uh, there's a lot of pressure to make sure that everything is done right. Um, I think I've managed to, to do it so far. <laughs> <laughs> I hope.